Hi, this is Shady and welcome back to another MMA analysis and in this episode I'm gonna be taking on the king of the heavyweights, the goat of sambo and judo, Fedor Emelianenko. Now, I've noticed that everyone has a different approach to takedowns in MMA and usually it reflects the background and disciplines they have been doing and it shows and I'm gonna detail some examples the first one is the Harai Goshi now I know here they are wearing a gi this is kind of like combat sambo Harai Goshi means he, uh, sweeping hips so it's like a hip toss but you use your leg to sweep from the outside in order to block the legs so they can collapse together no escape they just flip and fall on their back so that's basically Harai Goshi because if you don't sweep the leg backwards they might have a chance for escape um, you block with the hips and you sweep backwards and using the momentum to really sweep forward so uh, to I'm sorry uh, throw forward with the sleeve and the lapel however in MMA it can be easily done with like a overhook underhook clinch uh, it, again it is a judo classic it can be done with so many variations coming over backwards forwards or sideways here you can twist your hips on one foot and just execute it um, again like any other judo throw it has many variations of executions it depends on the situation you are in and the types of movements that's going on uh, during the match so the first one is the harai goshi sweeping hips uh, here let's see it again now that we watched it he grabs the belt here um, it's not like a complete uh, how do you say kumikata but he was actually going a bit for a clinch the second one is the kosoto gake now I talked about it in my hoist video and my Khabib video kosoto gake it's the minor outer clipping or uh, reaping in a way um, it's a very instinctive takedown for example little kids when they wrestle uh, when they want to trip the other they would hook the outside leg and go down so kosoto gake is pretty instinctive for the human anatomy um, that's why you can easily find it with Khabib with Hoyce and here Fedor Emelianenko it's a basic judo uh, takedown yet completely uh, effective that's why it has a repetitive pattern but the difference is um, everyone has a different approach to it what do I mean by that for example uh, Khabib uses it after a failed uh, double or single hoist uh, was clinching upon the cage and he did it so but a Fedor particularly he goes for like an upper body clinch it shows his background in judo and sambo it, it shows that it is very important for him to have upper body control and control the posture rather than shoot and then use it in case uh, the single or the double failed so it really shows the approach of the techniques shows the background of each uh, fighter uh, to be exact and this is very nice details to be uh, observed and paid attention to so so we have the harai goshi and the kosoto gake and the next one is the o uchigari or the major inner reap we saw khabib do it in judo and also in mma it is a classic uh, judo throw you clip and you rotate you can either use the other leg to grab it to really assist the takedown here let's see it in a judo context you just uh, go in sideways hook the leg and draw like a semicircle and push down your opponent and you achieve the takedown so you draw like an O with your leg it, some people that's how they teach kids they say O Uchigari you draw an O from the inside and again it really shows the background uh, Khabib was doing it in front of the cage while he had his opponent uh, his back to the cage uh, he couldn't go for the double or the single so he went for O Uchigari and Emelianenko does it either upon the ropes or in the middle of the ring it doesn't matter because it's a throw he's very much accustomed to from sambo and judo so again the approach differs from fighter to fighter uh, regarding the same takedown so it is very again interesting to say this 
and also it's very important to see the subtleties that judo present in the context of mma and not just there's no gi then judo makes no sense only the submissions uh gracie jiu-jitsu blah 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 which in fact it's not the case i know there's reliance on gi but once you train for mma you change your way of grip fighting and it becomes more of a like a upper and lower clinch or like um over and under hook style of gripping and it simply differs so here we have another one and it is the sasai tsurikomi ashi another judo classic is when you grab your opponent you spins backward to your back and uh, with you with the heel of your foot you block the ankle and thus blocking their way but with the clinch you are really going forward so it's like a trip it's not a sweep it's tripping here you see you block but from the upper body movement you push backwards to you but you block the ankle and thus creating this wheel motion and flipping them one of the most effective and surprising takedowns uh, in judo and also a judo classic the sasai tsurikomi ashi very effective no matter the height or the weight of the opponent simply blocking their ankle and really having like a big kuzushi or off balance while blocking the ankle really trips them here you can see it's a combination with an osoto gari attempt and then going for a sasai turikomi ashi here is another footage of it being done very slowly let's check out the footwork here as the foot it's coming forward you block it and here you lift up with the sleeve and the lapel and create an effective throw so here the next one is the morote gari or reaping with both hands i've talked about this reaping with both hands can be either a body lock takedown it can be a single leg it can be a double leg as long as you are reaping your, you, the body of your opponent with both hands it is considered morote gari we are talking about technicalities and et, uh, and like the uh, etymology of the term something like that semantics uh, so we saw with khabib and hoist they would shoot either on the waist like hoist and khabib either on the knee or like a single or a double but fedor uses a body lock and reaps and goes down uh, forward so all of it is still technically morote gari and this is why it is important to understand the meaning of the techniques not just regurgitate them in japanese as if we are you know we know better than the others but in fact we should understand the term of it it that's the cool thing about it when you learn the terms you just realize that it translates literally to the technique or the action that's taking in the technique for example so that's why it is better than calling it ezekiel choke the la riva guard uh, you know americana all that all these useless terminologies that confuses people in japanese terminology when you really say a technique's name you are actually saying what you are doing which make things even uh, easier to understand and also uh, far more accurate as a description so this is another thing we need to know that's why uh, John Danaher says Ashigarami and talks about leg entanglement so it's very important to uh, understand terminology as well and here is none other than the greatest throw of all time the Uchi Mata or the inner thigh reap here you go it's like an ochigari but you throw your opponent forward rather than backward and it has very uh, uh, like a a lot of variations you have a spinning variation as you can see here as they come you reap their inner thigh and they fall down um, you also have like a spinning here it's called an oikomi uchimata where you step between your opponent's legs and then turn and lift and reap away the inner thigh so uchimata like any other judo takedown it has so many variations here you break down your posture of your opponent and as they are trying to lift themselves back up you reap away using their own momentum against them so 
Uchimata literally translates to inner thigh reap. Again, terminology is very important here. It is considered a kenken uchimata or a hopping uchimata. Sometimes you cannot lift them all at once. So you spin and hop in a circular motion until their balance collapses. Here, you just rotate on one heel and use just one step uchimata it's called tobikomi uchimata a one step uchimata you spin on your heel and the leg that's spinning you use the momentum of the spin in order to reap the inner thigh here you can do like a, a to the si side hopping or side sway and then use the momentum to do uh, an uchimata again it's a classic judo takedown very effective destructive if you don't know how to fall I'm talking from experience your lungs will blow up again very effective in MMA or any context there is whether it's Sambo a BJJ or whatever again judo it is the foundation for all these grappling arts or at least the arts we practice now in the 20 and 21st century um, wrestling for sure but judo still has a major role to play even though it is uh, very subtle in appearance in MMA so that's why I'm doing this series in the first place and finally I just want to say it is important to understand judo and the terminology I cannot stress this enough not only for the cultural aspect but also in order to understand techniques uh, better giving them names uh, like Southern American names and like nicknames will actually make things far harder to understand uh, But while you learn them in Japanese and learn the literal translation It will really help your culture and also your education in terms of these techniques If you have anything else to add Please let me know down below. This was Shadi and thank you for listening